You know, I swear, just about every time I get on to make content, it's always nighttime and things are dark. I'm sorry, it just is what it is. What's up, guys? Kilo Whiskey here, and today we're talking about the clan update. I'm gonna be firing through a bunch of different stuff pretty quickly here, so bear with me. But, uh, yeah, so, by the way, I made a clan. It's a thing. Uh, Skinwalkers, hey, here we are. We're like two and a half weeks old right now. Uh, I figured this was the best way to get into the new clan update with all this new PvP content. So, I mean, uh, full disclosure, uh, I, I have not been clanless for like the past ever. You know, I've, I've always been in clans. I've always had alts and clans. For YouTube, I've kept this character uh, uh, neutral, you know, and I'm, I'm going to con uh, continue to keep a neutral character. But I just figured since uh, Kilo here is uh, a max level 150, yeah, it would be kind of a waste of them just to use them for PvE stuff. I might as well uh, gear them up for PvP and go and go do that thing. So that's what I did. You know, he's got a full you know PvP loadout, um, and I'm you know gonna max mod my uh, A4 here, my VSS, and we're gonna have some fun PvP content coming up in the future. But yeah, so let's uh, let's run through all this stuff about this PvP update that I've discussed in uh, in the beginning. So here we are at the clan registry desk. We're gonna go over how to create a clan. Well, you know, it's pretty much simple. You come to this guy right here at the the clan registry. Now there's one of these clan registry areas at every map now. So Black Forest, Vesuvius Airport, all those bases, well, all those maps. There will be this clan registry area where you can. Uh, create a clan, declare peace, war, all that good stuff right from here. Talk to this gentleman. You're going to have to pay 5 million rubles. And you're off to the races with your clan. Once you have your clan activated, you can go in here and you can do different tests. So I can test myself. Um, there are three different tests that you can do. Uh, there should be a yeah easy, normal, and hard each one has different levels of clan points, and I think it's like 20, 10, and 5, something like that. Uh, and it gives you, you know, he'll give you different tasks you can do to get your clan points. When we open up our clan menu, you know, hitting O. So my clan, I created the Skinwalkers. Uh, you know, we have 26 people as of right now out of 200. Uh, the leveling system hasn't come into play yet. Uh, you know, we're at 21,000 clan points, which I think is actually pretty good given the fact that uh, I only created this clan two weeks ago. Uh, barely two weeks ago. Yeah, so we're just over two weeks in existence. And, uh, you know, we're at 21,000 clan points. I think that's pretty solid. Uh, you know, so right here it shows you where, like, what bases you currently uh, own and the timers and how long until that's up. You know, you're. Your clan motto, your clan message, you can edit all this stuff and make it. Uh, your clan's emblem is in the background. I think it looks really nice. You know, you have your your different, uh, you know, your rank list when they're online. Clan points per each individual uh, names and ranks. Over here, we can, we can customize the names of each one of the ranks that we have within our group. And we can customize the permissions that each one of these ranks hold. And then over here is our relations tab, as I've uh, I think I've gone over before, and then everybody that we're at war with. Now here's the clan board, which is mostly what I want to talk about. When we come over here, there's one of these in each one of the maps, and it brings up uh, first the leaderboard. So you can see like Revenant right here is in first place, you know, with uh, a good amount of clan points. Your first, second, and third. Uh, we're two weeks old and we're in 12th spot, so I'm really proud of that. Really happy with the guys who've been putting a lot of hard work. And uh, I think uh, in another week or so, we'll be probably in the. Uh, I think we'll be coming close to the top five. It's like, like we're doing pretty good. Uh, we can sit here and we can scroll through this list, and then you can see some of these other groups, and it goes down. I think there's like 150 clans in this server for the US one. Um, and then right here, so we have our different levels. So we got like, you know, uh, level one tier clan, level two, level three, four. None of this has been implemented yet. Uh, so that's why nothing shows up. But basically what it's going to go off of is however many clan points you have uh, will determine your clan's level. This right here is the capture map. 
and I touched on this briefly in uh, the update that I did uh, before. And basically what this shows is where all of the different bases are within the map that you're in and where they'll connect to. So we got these big circles here, our weekly bases. These smaller circles are daily bases. Radio station, my clan currently holds it. 18 hours, 35 minutes till it's over. Uh, and it tells us what faction that they connect with. And then like here, Asylum holds it. Uh, well, we hold Asylum, you know, uh, one day, 17 hours. Uh, boat production. And then I think like Rev has uh, these two here. And then you have, let's see, if we click group cards, it should show all the group cards here. So we can see like, you know, what, what each, you know, who holds what. Uh, where is it at? And then trade routes. Trade routes shows us how different things are connected. So, like, this green air line means that we we own airport, which is a uh, airport base in the airport map, of course. So, this base is connected to that base through trade routes, and then which is then connected to asylum. Uh, and then the uh, fishing hut in Black Forest is connected to Sawmill. And I believe Rev also needs Vaselki as well in order to get uh, a quest to get like old uh, instruments or something like that. Uh, so e each one of these different bases has, again, factions that it's linked to. You can build up rep within the faction of that location and then use that to then get stuff from them. Well, back here at Asylum, let's explain bases. Asylum here is a weekly base. And right about now, we have uh, all the base amenities. So, uh, you know, there, there's different weekly bases scattered throughout the map in different areas like Black Forest, Vesuvius, and yada yada. Uh, you know, we have all the flags purchased here. So we're just going to, we'll start with the base manager. At every base, there is a guy, this gentleman here. He's a base manager, currently works for us. So he's got, you know, our clan tag and emblem, all that there. When we open up uh, the dialogue with him, I can do two things. I can either uh, work for the benefit of the clan, and he's going to have different quests that I can do where I can deliver packages to different areas for clan points. I can also bring him stuff like radio parts or uh, certain artifacts. And you can develop points within, uh, you know, that faction. And also, you know, there's there's uh, trade routes to get involved into this uh, that I discussed earlier using the board. I don't think we have a settlement spokesman yet for this location, but... Uh, yeah, the settlement spokesman is where you would buy that stuff through. That's a guide. We'll get into that in just a minute. But, uh, yeah, so you can do quests, earn clan points, uh, buy stuff from the traders uh, over here about base control. So if I go to add flag, which is our first option, it brings us up here into this little cool overhead view. It shows us the general area. We can click on individual flag locations to see where the flag would be. And we can buy these flags. The base, when you capture it, comes with three flags by default. You have to purchase each additional flag for a million rubles, and this is for a weekly base. Daily bases only come with one flag, and you can purchase an additional flag, with the exception of airport map, which has three flags. Uh, these flag locations, like I said, are they're a million rubles apiece, uh, and you know they have your logo on them from your clan, and we can we can jump around. And look at these different uh, spots you know, using this interface. Coming back here to our uh, base, we can open our base uh, control interface. And then uh, right here, you know, so this is the control interface, base name, base level, clan owner. Uh, we have money in the account right now for buying traders and stuff. Time before the attack happens, uh, our clan's emblem. And then we can come over here to base account. So these are all the different vendors that we have at Asylum. And this is how much money that they've generated thus far. So the base armorer always usually brings in the most amount of money, followed by, uh, you know, the cloth trader. The A trader has been around the longest. That's why he's got, uh, you know, what he does. But some uh, bases are more lucrative than others. Uh, some clans like to shoot neutral players. I don't. I mean, if they want to come in and they want to spend money and use our, our traders, power to them. That's what they're there for, right? I'll take your money. Uh, come over here to base modifying. And this is kind of all the different options that you can buy for the base. So cloth trader, armor trader, different workbenches, a stockman, 
Uh, we have most of these things purchased. And then down here, Settlement Spokesman involves the new trade routes that I talked about before with, with bases being linked together. Um, every base, daily bases usually have like four guards, uh, I believe, or uh, is it four? Or is it, it's like, what, two patrol guards and like two stationary guards, something like that. Um, I forget. I'll have to look again. But clan bases have, or weekly bases, have the most amount of guards. So if I go over here to base guard and I click buy, once I've purchased them, then I have to hit, sit here and click set up. Uh, and when I go into setup, it brings up this little window over here, zero out of six, zero out of three. So that means all of our guards are currently placed. But if you want to place a guard, you want to keep this window open while you're running around. And I believe our, we got a couple static guards over here by the front. These guards have infinite health. They cannot die, uh, outside of capture. Uh, they can only be killed during capture. They're just AI bots. They'll walk around, they'll shoot stuff. Uh, it creates a safe zone, so if enemy clans try to come in this area, uh, you know, they'll mess them up. I can walk up to them, and I can actually interact with them. I could tell this guy to follow me, and I can move him to different positions, uh, and then, you know, maintain position. He'll just stay here. Um, if I want to spawn guards uh, in a particular place, so stationary guards, uh, if, I, if I want this guard right here, you know, I'll, I'll stand right where I want the guard. And then I'll, you see how this lights up? I'll click on this, and then I'll be able to place the guard in that position. Um, in the past, you could do, you know, stuff like place the guards into bushes. But uh, now it's not really a point to do any of that because these guys walk around. If I place him into that bush, he's just going to kind of wander around this general area. If a dog comes up, he'll fall back, take cover, throw grenades, that sort of thing. Um, so I, I've kind of liked the stationary guards, how they had them before, but, you know, is what it is, change and whatnot, have to adapt. Uh, these are kind of new cosmetics that they added for the clan bases, so you can get your clan's emblem on these different uh, banners, and each uh, base has different numbers of banners, and you can place them all over the place. Um, let's see here. So, let's, oh, there, there's a patrolling guard. So you got stationary guards, patrolling guards that walk around, uh, snipers. Uh, I think we have a water well here now, so that's one of the other things you can get. Some of these bases have their own wells. The guide, we'll get into him in just a minute. You know, your own bulletin board. So I can come over here, I can do PvP event, I can go shopping for whatever items I want. On the community market, uh, I come in here and here's uh, our own stockman, so you can open up a vault. And this connects to everything else, of course. Um, you know, you can you can store stuff in there. You got your base armor, so you can sit here and uh, you know have them clean and repair all your weapons. Cool thing about the the base armor is uh, is uh, they got all the uh, armor piercing ammo types for the most part, besides like BS rounds that you usually get with black sleeves. It's a very uh, convenient place to get it. I'll buy usually a, a couple thousand rounds at a time. And throw them in my warehouse so I can mail them to different lo locations and stuff like that. This cloth trader here is also pretty cool because if uh, um, if I jump over here, you know, you can get uh, a 6B3 body armor. You can get the cool little uh, backpack um, for just rubles. You don't have to have personal credit. So if you're a newer player and you have the money but you don't have the personal credits you can actually come up here and you can pick these things up directly from here if you're in a hurry uh and then going upstairs well what we got here we got the technician again he sells uh you know stuff like uh you know these lights no personal credits needed no personal credits needed for that so uh, this isn't just for the clan clanless can come in here and clanless can uh, purchase stuff from here so the medic a lot of people use especially for pvp because you can get vitamins and more importantly carbon pills and they're a little bit more expensive here than other uh locations but you don't need to use personal credits you could just straight up buy them so you can buy a thousand carbon pills throw them in your warehouse and uh mail them to your different warehouses you got plenty of carbon pills for getting rid of overdosing chemical poisoning all that other good stuff yeah um so i think that pretty much covers it for uh, what we got here? 
so your your clan uh, interface. So when you hit O, it'll bring up this little clan interface, clan name, the different levels. Like I uh, said before, the levels aren't implemented yet, but they they will be very shortly. Your clan's motto, total number of members in the clan, clan points, message, and then right here is a little list showing that the current bases that you own. Um, you know how many clan points you have, ranks you are. You know, members, you can go on your members list and then the different permissions for your different ranks within your clan and then relations. You can see who you're allied with, who you're at war with. Uh, funny story, I didn't declare a war on any of these people. I just made the clan and all of them automatically war deck me, but whatever. Uh, let's see. So we got uh, clan emblem. I'll touch on that here in a second. Uh, but... You know, let's use the guide real quick. So, cool thing about these guides is you can fast travel from any base you own within the map using these guides here. So, we're going to go to airport uh, defense or attack right now. And since our clan currently owns a uh, radio station here, I just fast traveled from Asylum to radio station. And now I can just run right over here to airport gate and get over to airport base now in the future i believe they're going to expand upon this and uh, you'll be able to potentially fast travel to different maps if you hold key bases but while i'm here at this uh daily base so you can see that we still have some patrolling guards um it's not nearly as big there's uh only two flags for this location and we have our base guide so i could travel to uh, any other bases we own within the map and Daily bases just have a uh, base trader for the most part, and he will he'll buy pretty much anything, and he'll usually hold on to a lot of stuff. So it is uh, for you know newer players and clanless. You can swing by these junk traders, and sometimes you can find uh, like here crafting components on the cheap. But. Uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty much everything regarding bases, uh, daily bases, the flag system. Let's see, you know, all these bases are captured through capturing flag. You know, capture the flag here. So here's our here's our different flag poles. Each base has different amounts of them. Uh, you know, it's kind of cool. You know, they add your clan emblem onto it. But I do find it a bit annoying that uh, our the flags here are blue, and I do like the blue and gold with our clan's logo on it. So we got red and gold for uh, you know the banners, but then the flags are blue and gold. Um, it would be kind of nice to for them to expand upon this, and maybe I don't know. It just triggers my OCD. You got you know red and gold, blue and gold. Maybe some consistency here, or give us the option to choose the flag background. I think would be cool going forward in the future. You know, to raise and lower these flags, if it, you know, you just come up to it, you hit F, and then while you hit F onto it, you got to hold F. The flag will lower. Raise the other flag back up. If it's a daily base, you know, you have to, you know, take the flag in order to take it over. Defenders do get an advantage in that uh, if they've held the base for multiple days, they only need usually one flag to maintain ownership of it, like with a weekly base. But if uh, they've taken the base for the first time, they have to hold three flags, otherwise ownership can flip. Um, once you lose ownership of the base, you're going to get kicked out. Like, as of right now, I have a respawn point for that campfire right over there. If I die, I'll come back to here. But uh, let's say the base is under attack. They ha now have these new campfires around the base, like this guy right here. So this is one of your campfire, outside campfires. It's not currently lit right now. But, you know, radio tower is right over there on the hill. So here, here's radio station, and here's the campfire. Uh, they're usually right on the edge of the PvP zone. So you can see right here that, the you know, I'm within the PvP zone currently. And if I start running in this direction, you're going to see that uh, little thing should go away pretty soon. There it goes. Okay, it's gone. So now I'm technically outside the PvP zone. So that's how you can tell if you're in it or outside. Once I go in, there it is. Now I'm within the PvP zone. And as long as I'm within the PvP zone, if I die, I will get spawned at that campfire up there at the base. So as long as our base owns it. If I get respawn at this uh, outside campfire, which only works for clan characters, clanless 
cannot get this respawn campfire, which, which lights 30 minutes before the base goes up for attack. So when there's 30 minutes left on this clock before capture starts, this campfire will activate. Someone can then walk up to this campfire and get the safe zone. Once they have the safe zone respawn point, uh, they, for the next, you know, for the rest of the base capture, even if they run outside of the safe zone and they die somewhere outside of the safe zone, they will come back to this fire if they don't change their spawn point somewhere else. So if you're defending a certain base, usually most guys will come here to this campfire, set their spawn point here, and then run up to the base and set their spawn point at the base. That way, if uh, there's a force attacking and we're wiped out, we get reset back to this campfire and it gives us a chance to more easily take back the base. Um, these campfires are a good and a bad thing. Uh, they can work out to your advantage sometimes, but they can also be a major disadvantage because they, they become a point of control where it's very easy to camp players. Like this one here is a terrible location. It's out in the middle of the field. So it's very easy to be camped at this fire and it's very hard to attack the base from the fire. Most people that uh, try to attack radio station either uh, attack from the village over here or from the airport gate since it's a better spawn point with more cover to get up to the base. Or you, you know, you see how uh, we can see all these different people's clan tags here. If I go in here to relation, I can go to normal, uh, which you don't want to have that. But then if I go to emblem, it takes up less of the screen. But uh, I usually just run it on forever. That way I can see names for call outs. that so much when the damn tag doesn't show up man That's a lot of spiders. Yeah, they're trying to use the spiders to their advantage. Oh, it's around with my dogs right here in the campfire. Oh. See you guys. Campfire should be. I'm getting. Campfire somewhere over here. Oh god, I almost hit the same screen. Oh, so much Yeah. Yep, Adam did. Michael Jordan shot me from behind, so he's gonna overlook the hill. Yeah, there's still about six or seven of them over there on the report. Not a little bit. The guy in the hill is down, I'm gonna come pick you up, blockers. Oh, I respond. Oh, okay. Never mind, man. 
hopefully he won't get a quick respawn. Let's make it right. Wait, the airport base is gonna be up soon? Yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes. Oh, I'm gonna head over and see what I can do. Yeah, if you guys can hold that, that'd be great. I would recommend not getting... Well, yeah, guys, so that's pretty much all I have for you right now. Uh, I still got some Vesuvius stuff that I'm working on. I plan on getting around to... I'm, I'm trying to get that out as fast as I can. It's just with all this clan stuff going on now, it's a bit hard to kind of juggle everything. I'm going to be going into the Witch's Cauldrons, uh, doing doing that, that whole quest line. I want to get uh, show you guys how to unlock the uh, fast travel between airport and... Uh, yeah, Vesuvius. Uh, also, Reaper's quest line. So, uh, Reaper is now the weapon dealer. Vanya kind of sits in his own little back office. I'm going to fully dive into that. I want to go through the whole new quest line and show you how to unlock that, and how to get that, uh, how to get all that stuff open. So, we're gonna, you know, be looking for that coming out next. As always, love you guys. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, if you have any any comments, anything at all, you know, let me know down in the uh, the comments section. Uh, I always you know, try to help out as best I can. Uh, and yeah, we're recruiting, so if you play on the US One server and uh, you know you want to hop in, have a good time. Uh, Skinwalkers is recruiting. Shameless plug. But uh, see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.